Hi, my name is Tyler. I'm a part of Team 3. This is Shelby, Eric, Payson, and Andrea, and we invented the Coolie Pack. Enjoy. For our Coolie Pack, we have a hiking backpack right here. Our product is intended to sit over the top of it like this and attach with a strap similar to this. It goes around the base of the backpack and snaps back here. It doesn't go around the waist, it doesn't interfere with the hiker. <clears throat> Our product is small, and the idea behind it is that it is freezable the entire bag. So the inside liner of the bag is the cooling gel. You roll the bag up and you stick it in your freezer overnight and let it freeze up and cool down. Take it out and snaps on like so. After the first round of interviews, we learned a lot, um, and we took those changes that we got, the feedback, and applied it to our new product. So for the Cooley Pack, originally we had more of a boxy. Um, status and it was going to clip onto the top or the bottom. Now after talking to the people we interviewed, we got, we're got we going to change it to more ergonomically shaped so that it will go fit along with the backpack. We also added a couple more uses. Um, it originally just had one strap that would fit around there and then clip on the top of the backpack, but we decided to have a strap that will go across and you can use it for day use. We also figured out that people didn't want to keep things as cold as long as we thought, so we were expecting and hoping to get around three days, and some people did want that, but most people only expected like 12 hours, so they were okay with that day use. To add value to our pack, we decided on a few different things. We decided on a design that was going to fit on the outside of the pack. It's going to extend from the top to the bottom. This then will attach with these two straps that will clip to the top. The best way to fit around the pack was to go through the back without having the buckle on the inside. From there, we then thought that a storage pocket would be the best option. This pocket will allow something to stay cool without actually keeping it cold. The access point for the storage on the inside would be on the side because if you put it in the top, you wouldn't be, you'd be rummaging through things and it'd be hard to find. From there, we decided it would probably be a good idea to have it convertible. This way you can use it without actually having to use it to put on the pack. You can take it and it straps across the front of you. And that will attach from this corner to that corner with the male and female buckles. All right, next up we have customer segments. We have four customer segments that we're focusing on here. The first one is ultralight backpack. And this is your modern backpacker today. Everything is all about the weight. How light can you make something? And as we know, ice and coolers are very heavy. The Cooley Pack alleviates these problems by being a much lighter alternative. This allows you to both use up less space than a traditional cooler or ice pack and keep all your product cool without increasing your weight substantially. The second is Flash Packers. This is a new breed of backpacker. These are the backpackers that want to go out and have a kind of a fancy trip. They aren't the rugged outdoorsmen. This product works great for them because it's an easy to use product. It's simple to plan. There's no thought behind it. <clears throat> Third one is your day hikers. This would be like your family groups that go out and hike you know, with their children during the day. As you know, when you have kids along, they're going to need snacks. They can't go more than a couple hundred feet without needing that juice box. The uh, Cooley Pack would be great for this. It allows you to pack their snacks in it, maybe something for yourself, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, do so with very little weight added. Uh, the fourth one is the BLM, Bureau of Land Management. We're looking at wildland firefighters, forest service, people who have an occupation that takes them out into an area that's remote. As you know, firefighters, they're served by caterers for breakfast and dinner, but generally lunch is out in the field. They aren't anywhere near. So you can give them a coolie pack filled with different lunch items. This uh, means you can carry things that are fresh. You don't have to rely on freeze-dried things, high preservative dry goods. Uh, it gives them a little bit of a variety on what you can pack for their lunches. And it's also very important that they have good nutrition, so this opens up some other options. To ensure that the Cooley Pack is easily accessible to everyone and that everyone who wants to buy one can get it, we want to have a very strong online presence. So we're going to be available on Amazon. We're also going to have our own personal website that people can sell on. And we want to be able to work out with the bloggers and stuff that people can just click on links and go straight to where our e-commerce where they can buy it from us. We also want to be in retail stores such as REI and just other outdoor stores. It doesn't really matter who. We just want to be able to put our product in front of people that are avid backpackers and hikers. And then lastly, we also want to be very involved in going to outdoor conventions, expos, anything that people who are very interested in hiking and outdoor activities are going to be out there and get our product in front of as many people as we can. Customer relationships are very important to us. 
We are hoping to get our customers by a strong uh, brand message of the Cooley Pack. One of the things that we want to offer is our lifetime warranty so people can trust in us and trust in the product that they've purchased. And also in that strong brand message is an environmental piece is that we're doing good to the earth by not having to use ice so therefore you're not wasting water by using the Cooley Pack. To keep our customers, we want to engage them and get them to repost about our items since it's really a one purchase type item. We want them to still be engaged after their purchase. So if we give them points that are a dollar value for posting, sharing, blogging, or taking pictures on Instagram of our product being used, they can then take those points and redeem them for either merchandise or a different company that we've partnered with or the volunteer program that we talked about in the paper, Wine to Water, that they could go on trips and volunteer to actually rebuild and help underprivileged areas build clean water supplies. The Cooley Pack, we had a few different options. We'll eliminate a brick and mortar cost. So we won't need to use a store and have all of the um, costs associated with that as an online source. Our revenue will come from online sales and also selling it in key part with key partners. To keep the cost low, we wanted to do bulk manufacturing from a few different key partners. The universal design will also help us with this as well, using um, the different pieces to put together for a consolidated project. All right, for key activities for the Cooley Pack, we're gonna start out with research and development. We wanna have a very high focus on that to ensure that our product is effective because that will be the main reason that people wanna buy it. So we can either do in-house R&D and it's a little more fiscally uh, less expensive or we can hire consulting firms and they can do our R&D for us to make sure our product's the best. Um, we also are gonna have to get proper licensing agreements so that we can sell it in all the states and go to different expos, conventions, and make sure that we can sell the Cooley Pack everywhere that we want to so it's available to all the people that would like it. Also getting our patents. We have an adjustable strap that will strap up here and there and the way it attaches to the backpack that makes the Cooley Pack special. So we wanna make sure that nobody can steal our design. And then finally, we wanna make sure that we're really heavy on the marketing because if nobody knows about the Cooley Pack, nobody's gonna be able to buy it. And it's a great product, so we wanna be able to, like I said, be at conventions, expos, um, and also have a very high social media presence. So those will be our key activities. I'm here to talk about key resources. We have four major key resources that we're looking at for the Cooley Pack. The first is intellectual. This encompasses patents, trademarks, and brand name. All three of those are very important to get legal protection for so that our product can't be mimicked or otherwise copied. <clears throat> the second would be partnerships. It's important that we partner with different outdoor retailers so that we can get our products out into the market. It'd be a great opportunity for us to A, get it on the shelves, and B, do in-store demos with us present where we can demonstrate what our product is good for. That way customers can see it in action and help sell. As endorsements, we'd like to get our product into the hands of well-known uh, bloggers outdoors people, climbers, anyone that would have any use for this product. Getting it in their hands and letting them review it gives it a true sense to the end customer where they can get a true review of the product. The last key resource is supplier relations. It's very important we have strong relations with our suppliers. We need them there to both keep up with our production quotas and to support us if there's any kind of issues with our product. Key partners we understand to ensure high quality we need some of the top partners in the world. Uh, we need manufacturers that are gonna help us with our exterior design, build our straps, uh, work with our interior lining, and also make the gel packs to go inside our packs. We've done a lot of research in top industries in the world like Western Textile and MFG. They specialize in building backpacks. So if we can team up with a big manufacturer like this, they'll cut down on costs from not having to work with a bunch of different manufacturers, uh, each designing a specific piece. Next, we also need to work with a team that specializes in certain gel packs. And a big manufacturer such as Polar Tech Industries will help us build these gel packs. We can't have just everyday gel packs that are small that you put in a bag. We need special ones that are going to fit in our interior lining. Uh, last is we need to hit the market with uh, different bloggers. Great thing about blogs, it's free advertising. And that's huge on our marketing side. And if we can team up with the Adventure Journal, Semi-Rad, Adventure Blog, and all these big bloggers, and we can get our product in the name 
um, our product's name in these blogs could help us out tremendously. So one of our biggest difficulties we faced was actually coming up with an idea for our product. We uh, kicked around a lot of ideas and couldn't find anything we all agreed upon until uh, this one kind of came out of thin air in conversation and that's how we uh, came to the idea of the Cooley Pack. So Tyler's going to talk about some of the, the uh, difficulties we had finding the customer base. So when I was interviewing people and others were interviewing people, the difficulty was finding people that we would be selling to a specific niche, niche, so finding people that actually partake in backpacking and hiking and wouldn't just be like some random guy up the street saying, hey, would, would you want to buy this essentially a specialty project um, product? So finding people that would actually be into our product and be willing to buy it and then taking their knowledge and their opinions and then applying it to our actual product was key. Uh, one of the more difficult pills to swallow in this project was learning that no matter how good you thought your idea was, there was always room for improvement. Um, what seems great to me may not necessarily be great to Tyler, so we had to go through interviews and take our feedback and work our product over and over to refine it to be exactly what it needed to be for our customers. So that included things like the convertible strap, the zippers, the size, and a big surprise was the duration that people expected the product to stay cool. So. Hearing different feedback like that allowed us to refine our product, but it was also kind of a almost an ego check that your product isn't as great as you think it is, you need to ask the people who are going to use it. So once we got all that together, uh, we started to pull everything together in the end, which Tyler's going to explain. Yeah, and being able to take all the information that we gathered and applying it to our product. We started out with uh, basically a square cooler that barely attached to it, and we ended up coming with a product that would actually be very useful in real life and could be successful. So. Um, it's taking up the knowledge and opinions of others and applying it to yourself and then coordinating with your team to make it work. As a group too, we uh, learned a lot about each other. We all had different strong points. Uh, we learned that Shelby has audio visual skills that none of us had. We can't put these videos together. You know, Tyler's really good at spatial thinking and kind of ideas on the fly putting them together. Andrea kind of kept us all together and on track. I was reading through papers, that was my forte. So it was, uh, you learned a lot of different things about your group. Uh, learned a lot of experience, made some new friends. 